Hello everyone. Until now we have discussed linear ODEs, however in the real world, especially in physics or engineering, we normally find out that if we just look close enough and consider a system in a large enough scope, that most physical phenomena and technical phenomena are actually nonlinear. So in this video we want to get a very high level uh, impression and also a practical example on how we can describe nonlinear autonomous ODEs and then in the follow-up lectures we will actually learn how to solve them in the time domain. For this reason I have built up here a little sketch of a mathematical pendulum, a very simple one. So what do we have here is basically our, a bob which is attached to a, a fixed rope with a distinct length L. It is fixed here at this point and what we can basically see here is the angle tether and this dotted line here, this dashed line, is basically the trajectory uh, of the bob swinging with the speed v, the velocity v. The entire mass of this uh, simple pendulum is basically m. And what we can also see here are some gravity forces. Of course, we consider the normal gravity force going here towards the y coordinate, which is the mass times g, the gravity constant. And then if we decompose this gravity force into two forces, the one force tangential to the velocity, the angular velocity, then we get m times g times sine of theta. So basically the force which would accelerate or deaccelerate along this trajectory. And then uh, the normal force towards that, m times g times cosinus gamma, would not contribute to any acceleration or deacceleration uh, on this yellow or orange trajectory. So let's consider this very simple system to come up with a first uh, nonlinear ODE. What we can start with is basically the velocity v, which can be described as v of t, which will be a time-dependent quantity, and this is identical to theta dot of t times l, right? So this is the change of the angle times this length l, right? So if the length is very long and we would swing with a certain angular velocity, the absolute velocity along this trajectory would be higher, or of course if the change of theta for a given length would increase, then of course also the velocity would change. Based on that, we can of course also calculate the acceleration. So we get uh, dv dt, which would be a of t. So the acceleration of this bob along this dashed trajectory would be of course then the second order derivative of the angular velocity because we have here d dt times l. So far so good, however from our previous lectures we have also learned that with the simple Newton mechanics we can also express the acceleration as the sum of forces divided by the mass. So 1 over m, so the mass of this bob, multiplied by the sum I, F I, so the forces acting upon that bob. And the sum of the forces we can basically now describe as 1 over m. And we will basically consider two force parts. The one is already uh, shown here on this uh, sketch, and this is basically the part of the gravity force, so this mg times sine of theta, which is acting in the tangential uh, direction uh, along this velocity trajectory. So it will basically lead to a deacceleration, right? So if the bob is basically traveling upwards here, then of course the, um, the part here of the gravity force will basically lead to a deacceleration, to a braking uh, force. Vice versa, if the bob is traveling in this direction, of course, again, the gravity force will lead to, to a deacceleration. So basically, this part here, this mg times sine of theta, will be counted negatively because it will act in a braking or deacceleration manner. 
So mg times sine of theta with a minus. Additionally, which is not yet uh, considered here, if the bob is basically um, traveling with a certain speed v along this trajectory, we will also consider that there is basically some drag force, which is v of t times b, b is just some drag constant. So we assume here a simplified linear drag, basically meaning that the faster this bob will swing, will travel along this trajectory, the higher the air drag of this bob traveling through the air. So very simple model, but if we consider this as also as a deacceleration force, what we get here is minus v of t times b, and b, as I said, some constant. Of course, v of t, we already said that this is also identical to theta dot of t times l, right? So assuming that this length of the pendulum is constant. And so we can basically bring this together and find out that the derivative of the speed is theta uh, two times derivative. And on the right hand side, we get one over. So this L I basically bring to the other side. And here this M I put also in front. So one over LM times this part minus M times G times sine of theta minus this part which is theta dot of t times l. Okay, so this would be basically my acceleration equation for the angular acceleration along this trajectory. From this now I can basically build a very simple state space model or nonlinear state space model. And I say, okay, my state x has two components, x1, x2, and I'm just omitting here the time index for uh, sake of compactness, and I define that the first state should be just theta, so the absolute angle displacement, and the second stat state should be theta dot, so the angular velocity. With this and our equation regarding the angular acceleration here, what we can then get is our state space model, which is x dot of t is identical to. In the first row, I get basically x2. So that is basically the uh, a correlation here that x2 is the derivative um, so that is basically yeah, just this equation in a rewritten way. And then the derivative of the second state, so the derivative of theta dot becomes theta two dot. So we can basically write down this equation and also consider here some of the cancellations along the way. And we will get minus one over L times sine of x1, so this theta here is our x1 at that point, times g minus b times x2, so here our theta dot at that point. I could also add here the of t for the sake of completeness divided by m. So, and this would be my right hand side, f of x of t. And for obvious reasons, we can see that this is not identical to a times x of t. Because we can see here on the right hand side, we have different nonlinear expressions, especially here the sine x1 of t. So basically, 
This is a nonlinear ODE which comes from a very simple mathematical mechanical model. And the problem with this is that this damped mathematical pendulum cannot be solved analytically. So we will not be able to find an analytical equation which will fit to this ODE. And this gives basically rise to the motivation why we also need numerical solutions, which I can calculate by a computer, in order to solve such and other ODEs based on numerical calculus. And we will handle this in the next videos. Thank you.